In this lesson, we are going to study the graphs of logarithmic functions. In order to sketch the graph of y equals the logarithm of x to the base b, let us recall that its inverse is the function y equals b to the x. Let us first consider the graph of y equals 2 raised to the x. So in this case, we are looking at y equals b to the x where b is greater than 1. In order to sketch the graph of its inverse, we have to reflect this line along the line y equals x. Here is my line y equals x and let us get some points from our graph y equals 2 to the x. Let us take the point 1, 2, 0, 1 and negative 1, 0, 0.5. When we reflect the point 1, 2 along the line y equals x, we simply interchange the coordinates. So this goes to 2, 1. 0, 1 will go to 1, 0. And negative 1.5 will go to 0.5, negative 1. Moreover, the curve y equals 2 to the x has a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis. That's y equals... 0. For the inverse, this horizontal asymptote will now become a vertical asymptote. And what will we expect? The x and y will also be interchanged. Hence, it will become x equals 0. Therefore, the graph of y equals log of x to the base 2 will look something like this. Then it will approach your negative y-axis. Take note that the red graph approaches the negative x-axis. This one, and that should be a smooth curve. And this green curve here is the graph of y equals logarithm of x to the base 2. Let us compare the red graph and the green graph. Take note that for the exponential function y equals 2 to the x, our domain is the set of all real numbers. What about for the graph of y equals logarithm of x to the base 2? Our domain is the set of all positive numbers. If you zoom out, notice this one. So for the logarithm of x to the base 2, the x-coordinates are positive numbers. What about the range of y equals 2 to the x? The range of y equals 2 to the x is 0 to infinity, right? Whereas for the range of the green graph, what can you say about the range? Again, let's zoom out. Take note that this one will continue. Therefore, the range is the set of all real numbers. Notice here that the domain of the exponential function is a set of real numbers. And that is the range of the logarithmic function. The range is 0 to infinity for the exponential function. And that will be the domain of your logarithmic function. So hence, for this one, the domain and range of y equals 2 to the x and y equals logarithm of x to the base 2 will just be interchanged. That is no coincidence because again, that is the property of inverse functions. Let us consider the intercepts. For the intercepts, the exponential function will not intersect the x-axis, so that's none. For the y-intercept, its y-intercept is at y equals 1. That is, you have the point 0, 1. For our logarithmic function, it has an x-intercept at this point, And that occurs when x is equal to 1. That corresponds to the point 1, 0. For your y-intercept, none. Again, notice here how the x and y were interchanged. x-intercept, none it becomes y-intercept none. 
for the exponential function, y intercept is y equals 1. For the logarithmic function, it will become the x intercept. The x intercept would be x equals 1. Next, let's look at our asymptotes. For the exponential function, the red graph, we have the horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Vertical asymptote, none. For the logarithmic function, our green graph, do we have a horizontal asymptote? We have none. And for our vertical asymptote, we have the y-axis or that's x equals 0. Notice again that they were interchanged. The horizontal asymptote became the vertical asymptote here in the logarithmic function. y equals 0 became x equals 0. The exponential function has no vertical asymptote. When we go to its inverse, it will have no horizontal asymptote. Let us look at points here. What are the three points that we considered for the red graph? It has the point 1, 2, 0, 1, and this is negative 1.5. And for the green graph, it became 2, 1, 1, 0, and 0.5, negative 1. So these are the properties of y equals 2 to the x and y equals logarithm of x to the base 2. Now, in general, for any b greater than 1, all of these properties will still hold. But of course, this one will be 1b, negative 1, 1 over b. It will always pass through 0, 1. This one will be b1, 1, 0, and 1 over b, negative 1. You do not have to memorize these points. You can easily get them by plugging in the values to the equation of the graph. So for example, when x equals 1, you have here y equals b raised to 1. So that's why you have 1b. If x equals 0, of course, y is equal to 1. b raised to 0 is 1. If x is negative 1, your y is b raised to negative 1, which is the same as 1 over b. Next, let us consider the graph of y equals 1 half raised to x. Recall that it is the same as the graph of y equals b to the x when b is greater than 1, except that this function is decreasing. Just like what we did earlier, let's get some of the points and reflect this point along the line y equals x to get its inverse. Here is my line y equals x. The point 1, 0, 0.5 will go to 0, 0.5, 1, somewhere here. The point 0, 1 will go to 1, 0. And the point negative 1, 2 will go to 2, negative 1. How will this help us in getting the graph of y equals log of x base 1 half? Notice that your line y equals x intersects the green graph at this point and hence dividing it into two parts. For you to be able to reflect the green graph, what you can do is consider the two parts separately. First, consider this part over here. Notice that it will approach the positive x-axis. So therefore, when we reflect this, it will now approach the positive y-axis. So this green graph here, when we reflect it along this line, again, we will start here. It will be something like this. Of course, it has to pass through that point. This blue graph here is the reflection of this part. What about for this part? When you reflect it along the line y equals x, We'll start from here and this one. Take note that this part here, when reflected along the line y equals x, you get this part. And therefore, this is the graph of y equals logarithm of x to the base 1 half. And when you smoothen out the curve, 
you get this purple graph over here. In general, this is how the graph of y equals b to the x and y equals log of x to the base b, where b is between 0 to 1. This is how they will look like in general. Of course, except for the fact that some would be steeper, some would be less steeper. It will depend on the value of b. Let us again take a look at the properties. Take note that you still have that the domain of the exponential function is still the set of all real numbers. And its range is 0 to infinity. That's for the green graph. For the purple graph, the domain is again 0 to infinity. And its range is a set of all real numbers. For the exponential function, it has no x-intercept, but it has a y-intercept at y equals 1. And similarly, for the logarithmic function, it has an x-intercept at x equals 1 and no y-intercept. For the asymptotes, just like in the case b greater than 1, the exponential function has a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis and the logarithmic function will have a vertical asymptote along the y-axis. The only difference with the case b greater than 1 is that when b is between 0 and 1, both functions are decreasing. Because recall that for the case b is greater than 1, the functions were both increasing. Here is the summary of what we just did. For the exponential function and the logarithmic function, the graphs that I have here on the left is for the case b greater than 1. And this is for the case when b is between 0 and 1. They both have the same properties for the domain, range, x-intercept, horizontal asymptotes, and these three points over here. But then again, the only difference is that for the case b greater than 1, both functions are increasing. For the case b between 0 and 1, both functions are decreasing. Let us consider this example. Let us find the domain of f of x equals negative ln of x minus 2. Graph it and then determine the range and vertical asymptote. Find the inverse, find the domain and range of f inverse, and graph f inverse. First, let us take a look at its domain. If we go back to the properties, this is the domain of y equals log of x to the base b. When it says here that the domain is 0 to infinity, it means that whatever is inside your logarithm, that expression has to be strictly greater than 0. In this case, ln, that's logarithm, except that the base is just e. Our star is equal to x minus 2. So we have to make sure that this expression is greater than 0, which gives us that its domain is x greater than for its graph, how do we get the graph of negative ln of x minus 2? We can do transformations here by starting with the graph of y equals ln x. And then we go to ln of x minus 2. And then y equals negative ln of x minus 2. What will be the transformations involved from ln x to ln x minus 2? You move two units to the right. And for this one, you multiply the y coordinates by negative 1. So therefore, you reflect along the x axis. Let us consider first the graph of y equals ln x. Recall that ln is just logarithm to the base e, and e is greater than 1. So therefore, how will the graph look like? 
it will always pass through the point 1,0 and it will approach the negative y-axis, something like that. That is the graph of y equals ln x. If we smoothen out the curve, we get this red graph. That is your y equals ln x. Next, we want to go to y equals ln of x minus 2. And we do that by moving two units to the right. So therefore, this point 1, 0 will go to the point 3, 0. Since you are moving everything two units to the right, your vertical asymptote of x equals 0 will now be moved as well to x equals and therefore, my graph will look something like this. Something like that. That is for y equals ln of x minus 2. From the graph of y equals ln of x minus 2, we can now go to y equals negative ln of x minus 2. Simply by reflecting the blue graph along the x axis. This part here will now something like this. The green graph is the graph of y equals negative ln of x minus 2. Next, let's look at number 3. From the graph, determine the range and vertical asymptote of F. From our graph, what is our range? Even if you zoom this out, the range is still the set of real numbers and our vertical asymptote is x equals 2. Notice here, class, that even if you do not have the graph, you can get the vertical asymptote simply by looking at the equation of your function. If you go back to the properties of logarithmic function, the vertical asymptote of logarithm of x to the base b is x equals 0. This means that if you have logarithm of star to the base b, its vertical asymptote is star equals 0. All you have to do is to equate the expression inside your ln or your logarithm to 0. So here, when you set this to 0, you get x equals 2 as your vertical asymptote. So for example, I give you log of 2x plus 3. What would be the vertical asymptote of that? The vertical asymptote is just 2x plus 3 equals 0, which gives us that its vertical asymptote is x equals negative 3 halves. What is the domain of this function? Just like what we did here, the domain, you just set the expression inside to be greater than 0. So you just replace this by greater than 0. You now get that the domain is greater than negative 3 halves. For number 4, let us get the inverse of y equals negative ln x minus 2 for the first step. We interchange x and y. And we want to solve for y. Let's get rid first of the negative. So this becomes negative x equals ln of y minus 2. How do we get rid of ln? To get rid of ln, you make it the exponent of e. So we get e to the negative x equals e to the ln of y minus 2. Take note that we are using the property that b raised to log of x to the base b is just equal to x. Now in this case, since our b is e, so we get e raised to ln x equals x. You always use this property when you want to get rid of the logarithm. We now have y minus 2 equals e to the negative x, and therefore y is equal to e to the negative x plus 2. For number 5, we have to get the 
domain and range of this function. This is your f inverse of x. What is the domain of f inverse and its range? Take note that in number 1, we got the domain of f. That is 2 to infinity and the range is a set of all reals. So therefore, for the domain and range of f inverse, you just have to interchange this two. This interval 2 to infinity will now become the range of f inverse. And the range of f, which is r, will now become the domain of f inverse. So this is r. And lastly, we have to sketch the graph of f inverse. So there are two ways to do that. You can either reflect the graph that you have already obtained earlier. You can reflect it along the line y equals x. Or, of course, you can also do transformations. Here is the graph that we obtained earlier. So since this one has a vertical asymptote of x equals 2, its inverse will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. I have here the point 3, 0, so this one will go to the point 0, 3. First, I will reflect this part of the graph along the line y equals x. How will it look like? Take note that it approaches the upper half of the line x equals 2. So for this one, it will approach the right part of the horizontal asymptote. So it will be something like this. And for this one here, when we reflect, that is the graph of y equals e to the negative x plus 2. And that confirms our sketch. If you find that reflecting along the line y equals x is a bit difficult for you, you can also sketch this graph by doing method 2. That is by using transformations. We will start with y equals e to the x and then going to y equals e to the negative x. And lastly, we will go to y equals e to the negative x plus this means that we start with y equals e to the x. How does y equals e to the x look like? It is just an exponential function with b greater than 1. So it's an increasing function, like something like that. That's y equals e to the x. And then e to the negative x, we have to reflect along the y-axis, that is because the x-coordinates gets multiplied by negative 1. If this is your f of x, e to the negative x is your f of negative x, correct? So that's why you reflect along the y-axis. If I reflect along the y-axis, something like this, And lastly, from here to here, we go up by 2 units. So this will go to 3 and something like that. And we are correct. This is the same graph that we obtained earlier. For our next example, let us find the domain of the logarithmic function y equals 3 times log of x minus 1. This is base 10. For the logarithm, you just set the expression inside your logarithm to greater than 0. So that gives us x is greater than 1. So our domain is 1 to infinity. How do we sketch the graph of 3 log of x minus 1? 
we will start from y equals log of x and then y equals log of x minus 1 and then some stretching. From here to here, you move one unit to the right. And then this is stretching because all the y coordinates gets multiplied by 3. Let us start with the graph of y equals logarithm of x. The base here is 10, so therefore your b is greater than 1. How does it look like? It approaches the negative x-axis and then something like that. Then we go to y equals log of x minus 1. We do that by moving one unit to the right. So hence, since you have a vertical asymptote of x equals 0, it will now go to x equals 1. This point 1, 0 will go to the point 2, 0. And like that. That's the graph of y equals log of x minus 1. And lastly, to go to y equals 3 log of x minus 1, we just have some stretching. Take note that to make your graph more accurate, you can use the three points. What are those three points? You have the points b1, 1, 0, and 1 over b, negative 1. But since I did not do any of that, I just want to get the shape of the graph. This one would be stretched vertically, so something like that. Let us verify that this is really the graph of y equals 3 log x minus 1. And we are correct. Again, I just want the shape of the graph. I'm not really concerned with the points here. You can get these points if you just took these points initially when you graphed y equals log of x. For number 3, let us determine the range and vertical asymptote of f. Here was our graph. Based from our graph, the range is still the set of all real numbers. Its vertical asymptote is x equals 1. Next, we get the inverse of y equals 3 log x minus 1, just like what we did earlier. Interchange x and y. We want to solve for y, so let's get rid of 3 first by dividing both sides by 3. How do we get rid of the log here? We make it an exponent of the base 10. Again, we are using b raised to log x base b is equal to x. Our base here is 10. So we get 10 raised to x over 3 is equal to 10 raised to log of y minus 1. The base here is still 10, which means that from here, this gets cancelled. We get that 10 raised to x over 3 is equal to y minus 1. And therefore, y is equal to 10 raised to x over 3 plus 1. For number 5, we need to get the domain and range of f inverse. Again, it's just a matter of interchanging it with the domain and range of f. The domain here is 1 to infinity, so this becomes the range of f inverse. The range here is r, that becomes the domain of f inverse. For number 6, again, we will use two methods. Either by reflecting along the line y equals x or by using transformations. This blue graph here is the graph that we obtained earlier. This is y equals 3 times log of x minus 1. I will just reflect it along the line y equals x. Take note that the blue graph has a 
vertical asymptote along x equals 1. Therefore, I know that its inverse will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. The point 2, 0 will go to 0, 2. And this part here, it approaches the lower half of the red line. So that means that the graph will approach the left part of the green line. And this part here will go something like this. That's it. Let us verify our answer. There you go. We are correct. The purple graph is the exact graph. This is the graph of its inverse. y equals 10 raised to x over 3 plus 1.